So this is prototype number three of a thermoelectric cooler, which is a very inefficient way to cool things down. I have about three inches of polyiso and some urethane foam insulation uh, around all the sides. And inside there is an aluminum case that is six inches by eight inches by 10 inches tall. Um, that's the cooling volume. There are four TECs, thermoelectric coolers, connected to that. And then I have the hot side of the TECs connected to this um, liquid cooling loop from the cheapest all-in-one liquid cooler I can buy. Um, there's also a temperature sensor and controller that will turn it off if it hits zero degrees centigrade. Um, and because it's a prototype for testing, I have some switches here, and these switches allow me to do parallel or series or on and off for a couple of the TECs to kind of look at how much power they need. Um, it can be run off 12 volts. I'm using a 12 volt power supply for testing here in the house. So I'm making this video so you can see how I built this and what design decisions I made, and hopefully it'll be kind of helpful to somebody else who's interested in playing in this space. Now, this cooler has an interior volume of 8 by 6 by 10 inches, which is 480 cubic inches, or 7.8 liters. So the refrigeration area is about half that of commercially available, the smallest commercially available car coolers that use a refrigerator, a uh, compressor refrigerator. That's about 0.27 cubic feet. Now, unfortunately, the outside is 18 by 13 by 16 because I kind of went overboard on the insulation. So that's 3,744 cubic inches, 61 liters, or about 2 cubic feet. So you could actually buy a small dorm refrigerator that's just about the same size as this guy, have a lot better coefficient of performance, a lot more volume to refrigerate inside. Um, it would be 120 volts instead of 12 volts, but you could power it with a small inverter if you wanted to. So this is a prototype. It's number three in the line. I started out with just some uh, extruded polystyrene foam that I gaffer taped together. Um, and I had a commercial air-cooled TEC unit on top of that. I then moved to a styrofoam cooler that I cut a hole out of um, because I was getting a lot of heat leaking out of my gaps. And once I kind of confirmed that two TECs were able to do the cooling I wanted, um, I decided to move to a passive or cooling side. So the passive cooling side is the aluminum enclosure. So I'm using aluminum flashing here. I sized this unit to fit a six pack of cans. Um, that's why I got eight inches by six inches on the inside. Um, I thought about going with mini cans, but I decided to go with just a, a regular 12 ounce six pack of 12 ounce cans. Um, now the height I went a little overboard on. I'm using aluminum roofing flashing and it comes in 10 inch heights or 14 inch heights. And the 14 inch was way too tall. Um, I looked at and I decided just to use 10 inches. So the height is 10 inches. I could go down to 6 inches on that if I wanted to make it a lot smaller. Um, the idea here is just to store some meats and cheeses for a camper. Now. I put a lot of insulation in here. I had to use um, polyiso insulation, which is the best foam insulation I can buy, but I had to use three quarter inch thick sheets because I'm in Florida and that's the thickest sheet that you can locally stock. Um, ideally, I would have liked to use two inch thick sheets. So to attach the polyiso to the aluminum flashing, I'm using Super 77 spray contact adhesive. So you spray it on both parts, you wait 30 seconds, you stick it together, and it bonds aggressively. Um, to bend my flashing, I made an improvised bending break out of just a couple of boards I had left over from a closet project. Um, clamp a couple things together, manually roll a board around. The aluminum flashing is thin enough and light enough, you can basically bend it by hand this way. Um, and I just used some pop rivets to make it into a square shape. So the first two layers of polyiso insulation, I did some butt joints, and I'm gluing the foam together on the foam side with white Gorilla Glue, which is actually an also a polyiso foaming adhesive. Um, it's just a little bit stickier and harder than the um, stuff that you get at the big box store for the insulation. I'm also using some great stuff, urethane foam, um, in gaps in a couple of places I'll talk about later. So the 
3M contacted adhesive is great for sticking the flat pieces of the sheets together where they have aluminum and foil reflective barrier. Um, it sticks that together. Anytime I'm joining foam at the edges or if I need a little air filling gap, I'll use the um, foaming glue, the Gorilla Glue, or the urethane foam for bigger gaps. So I went a little overboard with the insulation. By my estimate, it's, it's about R20 because there's five or four sheets of this R5 insulation. Um, by my calculations, my box, if it didn't have any openings and was just all insulation, would lose about five watts of heat continuously, which is a pretty small amount of heat continuously. The problem is I had to put a lot of openings in this for the thermoelectric coolers. Um, so the outer layer of this box, I got fancy, flipped my table saw blade to 45 degrees and made a, a nice fancy outer box. And I made a, a lid that's a short version of the box and then the big tall box. Um, and I was actually very happy with how this came out, how it put together. Um, so it, you know, it's very nice. I think if I were to do this project again, I'd make the outer box or buy an outer box already made. Um, and instead of cutting lots of polyiso, I'd probably just have an inner box and an outer box, and I'd spray in spray foam insulation. This guy doesn't have as good of R value as the polyiso. Um, the, the single part polyurethane foam is not quite as good, but it's reasonable. Um, and it takes a lot less time just to spray foam in and let it cure than to cut all those pieces of polyiso. So... Now, talking about the TEC coolers, this is a prototype and I put in four TEC coolers. I think I probably should have done two. Um, I think four is a little bit of overkill, but I wanted the option to really you know, put a lot of power into this thing. So with four TECs, it draws about 250 watts of power, so a quarter kilowatt of power going into this thing. Um, now, it doesn't actually cool that much because TECs are wildly ineffective, but you have to dissipate, you know, 260, 300 watts of power coming off the hot side of the four TECs. So if I put the four TECs in parallel, they're all getting 13 volts. They each draw four amps or so. Um, the whole thing draws about 19 amps all in all with everything going on. Um, that's a lot of power. Your average cigarette lighter socket is usually fused at either 10 or 20 amps. So that's probably more power than you want to use in a vehicular application. Um, but I can do that and I've turned it on and it gets cold very quickly. Um, also, it can get quite chilly because at 12 volts, or 13 volts, each of the TECs has a pretty good delta in temperature from the hot side to the cold side. Now in actual usage, I've found that running these guys um, in series, two of them in series, where they each get about six, six and a half volts works pretty well for me. I get enough delta in temperature to go from ambient of, you know, 25 degrees centigrade, about 75, 77 Fahrenheit, down to zero centigrade, um, basically, which is appropriate for refrigeration. Um, I tried doing all four in series, and they just don't have enough delta, you know, in the temperature. So, you know, three volts each just isn't enough power. Um, so really, I, I think maybe three in series could work, but I, I found two in series definitely work for the temperature I'm trying to get down to refrigeration temperatures. Um, now, I have switches on the front panel, and these switches are allowing me to take two of my TECs and put them in parallel or put them in series or turn them off entirely. Um, so at the lowest power setting, this box takes about 65 to 70 watts, depending on the input voltage. Um, there's three or so, three or four watts for the fans and the pump and then everything else is the TECs. And so at the lowest power setting, it gets down to refrigeration temperature quite quickly, um, and it maintains that temperature with no problems, um, and it can cool off a six pack at least overnight. I'll show you in a second video the full performance metrics, but it works. Um, the problem is it takes a lot of power. You know, it, it can take you know a half a kilowatt hour to cool down a six pack. Um, so. I'm using an all-in-one water cooler. I cut the loop, added some extra um, tubing, but essentially it's, it's just the $60 cheapest water cooler I could find. Um, and it 
is plenty of power dissipation if you run the fans at 12 volts. I was a little worried putting in 250 watts. I was a little worried the little radiator wouldn't handle that, but no problem whatsoever. Um, even with the TECs turned up full power, uh, the two fan water cooler was dissipating that heat and you know the water loop was just a couple of degrees above ambient and so that was that worked great. Um, the water cooling worked really great. I definitely recommend water cooling over air cooling on your hot side. Now on the cold side, I have the TECs bonded directly to the aluminum flashing that makes up the interior. So the entire interior is going to be chilled through mostly conduction, although there is some air in there that can do a little of convection. Um, and that worked really well. I didn't have any problems with that. It seemed to work better than when I used a commercially available unit that has a small fan on the cold side. Um, so if you're cooling with this, I do recommend using a metallic interior copper or aluminum. I chose aluminum because it won't react with water and turn green. Um, and something that conducts heat well. And you don't need any fans or cooling loops on the inside. Um, just passive conduction through that, that metal in there part is working great for cooling. Now on the hot side, I do recommend the liquid cooling because you have almost all your energy coming out of there on the hot side. And so um, I used four little blocks and run, ran the whole cooling loop um, in series and it cools it all down. Now I do wish that I'd used two instead of four because I'm not able to turn off two and leave two on. If I have two of the TECs running and then I turn off the other two, the hot side loop, which is only ambient, you know, it's 25 centigrade, basically pulls uh, a lot of the coldness or deposits a lot of heat through the TEC into the enclosure. So for this thing to keep refrigerating, every single opening through your insulation has to be pulling heat out. And that means all of your TECs have to be running. Um, so that means I really have to run all four of these TECs. And I believe two would be enough for the cooling I'm doing. So if I were to build this again, I'd only use two TECs and that way I could run them. I'd probably have about a 35 watt load um, to run two of them instead of four of them. So I did try running the fans on the radiator at 6 volts instead of 12 volts, it makes them nice and quiet. Unfortunately, it really reduces the airflow, and even with two TECs running, it was heating up the hot side loop above ambient, you know, 5, 10 degrees above ambient, and reducing the amount of cooling I could get. So you really do have to run those fans, you know, near 12 volts. You might be able to get an adjuster that can go down to 10 or 8 volts and make them a little bit quieter, but I just put them in series and tried doing 6 volts across both of them. Um, it was not enough airflow, so you do have to have that airflow going on the radiator for it to work. One thing that I was very happy with how it turned out was the lid. Um, so this guy here, I basically built the box out of polyiso. I put a couple of sheets of polyiso inside. Um, I have this XPS foam just left over from when I was first testing. Um, it fits inside directly. I had some weather stripping inside here as well. But what I did is I put um, a couple layers of saran wrap down over the box. And the box has the gap around the outside where I ran the wires and the liquid tubing. And I just filled that gap with the great stuff expanding one part urethane foam. And then I put this lid on top of that and it bonded the lid together and it made a really nice seal that molded itself to the exact you know, setup of my bottom box. Um, and that does a really airtight seal, it's really nice. Um, and that solution for just letting this foam expand into the spaces but protected by saran wrap so it wouldn't stick to it, um, really worked well. And the saran wrap just pulled off gently. The only thing I could have done better there was misted the saran wrap first to get some water on the bottom side because it took a little longer to cure than I would have liked just getting with the, the ambient air moisture that was on there. All right. So that's how I built this thing. Um, I'm going to have a second video that tells you how it works and do some, you know, performance tests. And I'll probably compare it against a commercially available compressor-based refrigerator, which is really the right solution in most cases.